Amy, what's your TikTok? Amy A M A T. Please follow me on TikTok. She puts content on every day. She's a certified person trainer, a holistic nutrition coach, and a mental health advocate. She's a former bikini body competitor, and she told me that she bought her dress and did her hair only for today. <laughs> her title is Bikini, Broccoli, and Spray Tan. And I'm not allowed to say her last name, so please welcome to me. <laughs> I want you guys to imagine something for me. Imagine a massive arena that fits easily 2,000 people. Spotlight. It's not on you guys, it's on me. <laughs> Sorry. The spotlight is on me. I can't see any of you. I'm blinded. I am lathered up in spray tan and bikini glue. It's this awesome thing that tapes your suit to your body so if you move around, it doesn't... It prevents accidents, unwanted accidents. So you're taped up, you're glued up, you're in five-inch heels that you don't usually wear. <laughs> you're nodding, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're in barely any clothing, and 2,000 people are staring at you. They're staring at your body because you're asking for it. You're up there as a bikini competitor. You're there to be judged on how you look. And in order for someone to qualify to go up there, what goes into that? Hard work, hard training, weeks and weeks and weeks of training, of eating out of a container. I, have, I didn't eat out of a plate for two years leading up to that moment. And there I was, being stared at for how I looked. People applauding my hard work. Some people might think, like, who has the guts to go do that? Some people might think, wow, she looks great. Some people might think she could have looked better. You never know. Millions and millions of opinions because you have 2,000 people watching you there and then a couple more seeing your pictures afterwards. So it's a lot of judgment. And I worked so hard to reach that moment, what seemed like a pinnacle moment, weeks and weeks, to get to that one spotlight moment when you're showcasing everything you've got. And I was smiling, I was laughing. My coach told me to smile more on stage, so I did that. I had my stage moment, I strutted, I walked, I posed. Then I left the stage. I didn't tell anybody I was leaving. I went backstage to get my things, found out my peanut butter was stolen. I had my valuables next to my peanut butter, by the way. I had my phone, my charger, my wallet. Those bodybuilders took the peanut butter. <laughs> we hungry. So that was a small letdown. Oh, my peanut butter's gone. But I grabbed everything, let that go. And then I blacked out. Honest to God, I blacked out. I had no memory of what happened between the peanut butter and where I ended up next. I was in a dodgy little street near downtown Boston in Taco Bell, crying my eyes out near the parking lot, eating five tacos in one sitting because I was so unhappy. I still had my makeup on, my spray tan. At that point, I had no idea what was happening, why it was happening, all I knew is I was in tears and I couldn't stop eating. That ended my insane two-year competitive journey in the NPC bikini. To go into what led up to that moment, I have to spend a little time to explain how I got there. I started off as just your average fitness girl. I was working out, I was seeing my body change. It was exciting. I had my classic transformation photo. I lost 50 pounds. 
And then years and years went into all that. I needed a new challenge. I was just never, ever satisfied doing the same thing. The next thing I knew, I wanted to compete. I wanted to show people I can do more, I can be more. That fitness just needed to keep advancing with me. I had that drive about me, you know? And it's a double-edged sword because I can achieve great things, but at the same time, I'm not taking care of myself. And that's the story that I want to tell today. I want to share with you not only my story, how I got there, how I got here, but the lessons that come along with that story. And I thought about planning this speech, then I scrapped that. I threw it in the bin because I learned yet another lesson just last night and it changed everything. So to begin, it was around 2012 when I discovered the sport of bikini bodybuilding. What it is is, I call it pageant with a little bit of muscle. You're basically in a beauty pageant, you're stripped down to a bikini, and you have to get as freaking small as you can for the judges. And I swear to you, I did not know these were criteria of judging until I entered this world. People were talking about glute hamstring isolation, the line that appears between your glute and your hamstring. How clear is that line you will place below your competitor if your line is not as clear. There are these little things that I was just so new to. It was overwhelming. It was, it was giving me a rush. Like, what is this? It's not just bicep curls and squats anymore. There's little details I can explore. And me being a nerd, god damn, that was amazing. So I went deep into it. Two whole years, I hired a coach. I did it the right way. Got sponsored by a good team in Boston. And then I had this realization, a year into what I was doing, that I had no friends. I had no life. I ate six times a day out of a container, reheated and reheated again, because I had to prep everything on a Sunday in order to have the same meal every day. I would say, no, I can't go to this, no, I can't go to that, until my friends got so sick of hearing that they stopped inviting me to things. Like, people didn't even call me anymore, people didn't text me anymore. I was in the gym three hours a day on average, eating for those other hours, and also doing classes in between. It was a really lonely life, and I started to question it a year in. So I asked my coach, I'm like, is this normal? to be so isolated, to be so lonely in this, to be so hungry and sad and so caffeinated because that's all you can do to survive in that, in that scenario. She goes, yeah, how bad do you want it? Young Emmy was really bad. Yeah, I want it, I want it really bad. Do you want it more than you want friends? I said yes. Because at the time, that's all I saw, right? It was amazing. It was just giving me this validation I didn't know I needed. But then where did it lead me? To Taco Bell, man. <laughs> to freaking Taco Bell alone. No one knew I left. I didn't even get a text, Imi, where did you go? Because guess what? No one came with me to the competition. By then, I was a wreck. I was so hard to deal with. I was grumpy. I was hungry, isolated, and freaking sad. Which brings me to the first lesson that I've learned through retiring from competing in 2014. It's not what you do that gives you the fulfillment and the validation that you need, wherever that may be in your life. It's where you do it from. I'm not here to trash talk NPC Bikini or the sport itself, not even close, because I'm here to tell you it wasn't the sport that destroyed me. It was where I did it from. I dove into it without understanding that I didn't fix myself first. I didn't understand that I didn't love myself. I didn't understand I was doing it for validation. I wasn't even fulfilled. I thought if I lost all this weight, if I lathered up in spray tan, if I proved to the judges I was the shit, then I will be happy. Wrong. And then I spent a lot of time blaming the sport for it because I didn't understand that one fact. It took years and years and years 
of understanding, of healing, of rebounding in my weight, of understanding that stage lean is not all year round lean, that being not so lean is not so bad, that I can be strong too, that I can be happy too, that I can be human too, have friends, be more than just that fit person. And through years of discovering all that, that lesson came to me. Which brings me to my next point. All these years learning these lessons was a healing process. And again, when I realized I needed to heal, that I was damaged from this experience, I expected my healing process to be the straight line of just getting better every day, getting better every day. One day, suddenly I'll be demon free. I won't feel this way anymore. Wrong again. Lesson number two, Healing is not a linear process. And I thought I knew that. I thought up until a few days ago that I was at a place where I can be like, healing is not a linear process. And I'm so accepting of that. <laughs> Lol. Two nights ago, I had a mental breakdown because I realized that in 48 hours, I have to do this talk. I was so <laughs> nervous because I'm like, oh, I'm about to share something really insane, something really personal, something really raw about this crazy journey that I had with starving, with eating six individual pastas in one meal. That's a true story. No more than six because coach said so these little things, where I'm at now, eating a full plate of pasta, I thought I was good to do this talk. And then I blacked out again, two nights ago. Seven years after that day at Taco Bell, I blacked out and I found myself, not at Taco Bell this time, it's too far, I live in Tonglo. <laughs> I had ordered food panda, Three boxes of Pizza Mania New York style pizza. 18 inches times three, you do the math. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but I ate all of it in one sitting from the pure nerves of me coming to talk here. What kind of nutrition <laughs> expert does that make me? <laughs> and I wasn't gonna share this because would that make me a freaking hypocrite? Somebody who poses about self-love, I've healed, I've done that, I've done the work. If you look at my Instagram, oh, I'm so happy now, look, I'm not as lean, but look how happy I am. And there she was, binging on a pizza, on the verge of purging in the toilet, again. Seven years after it last happened, because she cannot handle the idea that she's going to give this talk. Will my team be disappointed in me that they hired somebody to be a nutritionist who's still dealing with an eating disorder? Will you guys judge me? That's a lot. But I'm like, at this point, if I prevented myself from sharing this episode that I had, I will be a hypocrite. I will be the type of person who says healing is not linear, but doesn't accept it herself. Which brings me to my last lesson that I just learned last night after I called my friend who's sitting over here and I told her, I binged again, I, I, I did it again. And I'm a fucking hypocrite. <sighs> My last lesson is understanding self-worth and self-love doesn't just come logically. You don't just know it in your mind, through textbooks, through life coaches, but you know it emotionally too. And you need to heal up here and in here simultaneously because if you don't, it'll still be there to tell you that you're not good enough. But I think I'm good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and 
um, to part this speech, I want to say that healing can be so tough. And when you're so used to being perfect, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of breaking down is terrifying, but it's like a cold shower, right? It's so scary right before it. And then in the, in the beginning where you jump in, you're like, oh, god damn. But then after, it's a relief, and it's pretty great for your skin, too. Um, so I want to part this by saying, yeah, I, I totally deserve to be here telling you this story. And I'm not a hypocrite. I'm just someone who's healing and will always still be healing. And the plot twist is, I'm back to preparing for another competition. Yeah. <laughs> And this time, I trust myself to do it, despite all the pizzas I was eating the other day, because I'm completely acknowledging the state that I'm in. I trust myself. I have a team that trusts me. Do you trust me? Thanks, guys. <laughs> having house number three, having my friends and family being included in this narrative, I see the road to competition being so different this time around. My heart's in it. My mind's in it. And I'm so grateful that my team has given me the opportunity to share my story today. I honestly did not think it would go this way, but it did. And you guys are here watching me break down. It's pretty great, and I'm going to be grateful for it forever. Thank you guys for sparing your time to listen. It's been an honor. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.